Hey everybody, Chris Farad here. Welcome to the Phoenix Point backer release number three. Uh, the main focus of this release is the strategic layer. As you can see, there's still a lot of things that they want to add to the game. This is very early, uh, but we are going to be focusing on that strategic layer, how we get to missions, how we bounce around the geoscape, and how some of the different faction type things work. Uh, so we're going to start a new game. It's going to explain some of the basics to us in the game tutorial. And then we're going to have the ability to just go around, find different missions. Uh, there's no end state or end goal for uh, this backer build. But uh, I'm excited to see what they've done differently. I haven't played it since the first one. I have uh, dabbled in this geoscape a little bit to just understand how the movement works and how getting around works. Uh, I've done a little bit of combat, but haven't gone through any full missions or anything like that just to kind of experiment. Um, so we're going to kind of do this together. I don't know how long the series will run. We'll probably do a few different missions, try to find different mission types, and uh, see what kind of variation there is. So let's just have some fun with it. Um, I'm going to bring up the in-game tutorial because it does a pretty good job of explaining things. And that way, we're all on the same page and you guys understand what's happening. So uh, this icon here, this is our aircraft called the Manticore. With a uh, squad on board, it can carry eight soldiers. So this is this little guy here. This is our home uh, Phoenix base right now. And our Manticore is carrying four soldier types. We have uh, an Assault, a Grenadier, a Sniper, and a Technician, I believe. Um, the Grenadier, I think they call it a Heavy, but it basically launches missiles. And then this track icon here, I believe, is the, the vehicle that we start each mission with. And we'll show you that a little bit when we get in there. Uh, aircraft travel does require fuel. The operating range shows you how far you can travel, but you should stay in reach of a refueling station. So this outer circle, that's as far as we can possibly travel. But you notice some locations have a white outline and some have a dotted white outline. So solid versus dotted. And that means that if it's a solid one, you can go there and you're within refueling range. So you're within your home base area right now that you can come back to get fuel and go out and check other places. If it's in a dotted line, it means it's outside of refueling range. You can still go there, but you're either going to have to build a refueling station or use emergency refueling uh, in order to uh, get home. The problem with that is that you have to advance time to wait for your base to generate enough uh, resources to do that emergency refueling. While that's happening, like if this were the full game, other factions would be doing their thing and you'd be just losing time, which is never good. Uh, you can build a refueling station at a haven. You'll automatically refuel your aircraft whenever it arrives there. You do have to be careful, though, because hostile haven leaders may destroy that station. Uh, and if your aircraft is stranded, as I just explained, you can do an emergency refueling option, but it requires a significant amount of resources. The way I kind of think about these is like radio towers in XCOM. And they just, if you build refueling stations, it does expand your range because you don't have to come back to your original starting location to be able to refuel your uh, aircraft. Now, there's a few different mission types. Uh, scavenging sites is going to be the first one that we find. Uh, these are abandoned military facilities. Good source of weapons and basic resources, but uh, if it's within a mist zone, it's going to be a lot more dangerous. What's a mist zone? Well, it's this giant pink zone here. And... The way that this geoscape works is it's all random where you, these dots appear on the map every time you start the game. So you can, and, and it's also different where your uh, miss zone can be. So this start is not as strong as one that would have a whole bunch of explorable areas outside of a miss zone, as you can imagine. Uh, if you can help a haven that's under attack by alien forces, if you succeed, you'll get a reward of basic resources and the faction it belongs to will be more favorable to you. And if you successfully defend a haven, then the attacking alien base will be located. You can destroy an alien base by defeating the spawner in nests or killing the queen in layers. That is the very basic overview of what we're dealing with here. You can see some uh, faction stuff up here, which we'll get into depending on what we find at these different sites. We're going to start exploring the sites outside of the mist zone and hopefully find a mission there. But if not, uh, we'll just take the ones that we can get. So we're going to right click to move here. You see time advances. Oh, that's very nice. Scavenging site. Uh, this is what we want to go to right away. Um, we're not going to... Uh, just for the sake of showing you a little bit of the exploration on the geoscape, I'm not going to take this site just yet. Um, I, have ha I have done some starts where I have to scan like eight different places before I find the scavenging site. Sometimes we'll find it right away, just like that. 
Um, but I want to show you just some quick faction stuff as well. So here, this is uh, a Haven outpost, but it's independent, so it doesn't align to any one of these. Uh, the leader's Matthew Thomas, and this here, I believe, indicates your specific reputation with that leader. So you'll see this this faction we have lower diplomacy, this faction we're exactly neutral, and this faction we're a little bit higher. Within this, though, you might find variation based on the leader. So let's see if we can find anything like that. Here we go. Okay. So uh, this is the Synedrion faction. That's this group in the middle. So you can see, as a whole, we are uh, totally neutral with them. But with this specific guy, we're we're in the positive. So if we wanted to, you could say, you know what, let's build a refueling station here. And this outline would indicate the new areas accessible by that refueling station. Now, this is probably not an ideal location for a refueling station, but it's something to consider. Um, if we go out here, we're not going to have enough to get home. So at this point, if you wanted to explore further, you would just click home. You're going to automatically refuel and then you can go out to these other locations in this mist zone. Here's another independent one that we're favorable with. Here's another independent one that we're favorable with. Here's another scavenging site. Uh, now, it's giving you this warning. Hey, this isn't a scavenging zone, so it's going to be a lot more dangerous, and uh, this could be potentially a bad idea. But just scouting these is nice to have so that you have an idea of uh, what the mission types are available to you. Here's another independent haven. Uh, this is probably a decent spot to build a refueling station on. Because then you can access these points and, uh, and be able to come home and refuel. So if we, rebuild, or if we build a refueling station, it's going to cost uh, 100 materials. So let's do that. Um, then we can go out here and we can fly back home no problem okay so we have another independent one here let's check this location and you can see our our fuel is basically represented by this there's not like a fuel gauge per se this is just your range and as you travel further this keeps decreasing 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 so we're finding a lot of independent uh factions let's fly back home to refuel all of a sudden the gauge is huge again Let's fly way out here. Independent is get again. Independent again. Go home and refuel. Now you could we could totally take these missions, and we're going to take these missions. I'm just trying to find different factions to show you guys. Um, but we're finding a lot of the independent ones, uh, which is fine. It's just limiting what I can actually show you at this point. So here, this is a destroyed haven. Haven under attack, so we can join this battle. Uh, you may intervene to eliminate the threat. If you're successful, then you'll get a reward from that haven. Uh, this is an independent faction again, defending strength 10, attacking strength 2. Um, and they have a pretty positive attitude towards us. There's an alien queen and an alien crabman. So these are, these are really cool, and these are things that we're going to do. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with a scavenging mission. And we could do... We'll just do the one that's right next to us. Oh, Haven repelled attackers. Okay, so they handled it on their own. The Baltazar Depot, attacker, alien. And we saw that that could probably happen based on the strength of uh, the enemy forces and based on their forces. So, pretty cool way that that works. They don't always need your help. Um, which is a, is a pretty cool change. Okay. Uh, this is scavenging site in that mist zone. So we're going to go ahead and just do the, the basic one. And we'll work our way up to the mist zone, and then we'll get to haven defenses and, and things like that. So at this site, we're going to find alien crabmen, alien mist sentinels, which is a new uh, enemy kind of tower that we'll see, and then these mine fraggers. So let's visit the site, and let's rock and roll. If you guys have uh, any questions, if there's something that's unclear, uh, please ask, and I will try my best to answer. I know that there's a lot of people that have a ton more hours, like people are playing these backer builds like all the time to really understand the systems. And so I'm sure somebody in the comments could help you if I don't know the answer, but uh, I'm sure somebody will help you. I believe that that would be the case. Okay, so right off the bat, we do see an alien here. These guys are cool. They carry uh, this grenade launcher arm. 
Um, so that can be a little bit devastating. It's definitely going to hurt us if they get close. Um, let's do a quick overview of the different soldier types. So this guy, Mike Quinn. This guy's our assault class. Basic guy, he carries a first aid kit as well, an assault rifle. He's got um, this ability called Rapid Clearance, where you can take three bursts at one or more targets with no action cost, which is really nice. Um, the way that this all works is you have uh, movement and action costs. You can utilize them however you want. So you can just shoot, shoot. You can move, shoot. You can shoot, move. You can move, shoot, move, depending on how far you've gone. There's a lot of flexibility in positioning of your soldiers and uh, it just works a lot differently from XCOM. So if you've never seen this, um, that's a quick explanation of how the movement works. You're also looking at this and thinking, okay, well, what's my percentage chance to hit? Well, we don't really have that in Phoenix Point. What you have is an overall view of the enemy's HP. If it's blinking red and white solid, it means that's you're pretty likely to do at least two damage here, right? You have, can possibly deal a lot more, but it's not a high chance of occurring. And you can even further understand this by zooming in. And you can start to target specific body parts. You can target uh, as much of the enemy as you can within these circles. In these circles, the way it operates is uh, this outer blue circle, it has 100% there. It means 100% of your bullets are going to be within that range. And this is a key thing for Phoenix Point is that Every bullet is different. Every bullet uh, has kind of a spread within this reticule. 50% of your shots in the red circle, 50% of your shots are going to land there. But you can see that the enemy's not even filling up that area. And you've, you've got cover to deal with, you've got things blocking it. Um, so it, it's definitely a different approach from XCOM, which I really like. I think it's cool that they've gone this route and it's completely different. You don't have to zoom in. You could just take the shot and say, okay, fine. We're likely to do this. But notice when we changed, our aim is slightly different. This guy, um, he might be like hovering slowly. He might be moving like small amounts. And that can actually change uh, what your uh, percentages are like. So notice now we're back to like possible damage on these. But possible damage is not likely to happen. Like it's, you can't really believe in possible damage. These are like, okay, I would say pretty confident we're going to get those. Do we want to take this shot? Well, what is this? Okay, here's a mist sentinel. This thing over here. What this does is it's going to deploy mist. And if you're inside of it, then uh, you take a negative buff. If aliens are inside of it, they get a positive buff out of it. This blue column, if we're able to get to that, it will replenish our will points. Will points are the things that we use for special abilities. You can see this uh, burst shot, it's rapid clearance, takes five will points. So uh, this is just how we use all of our special abilities. Um, that's how it works. Okay. So this is our technician. Now he's got the ability to deploy a turret, which is pretty nice. And uh, turrets work as you might imagine. We have our sniper here. And if we look at him... If we take a look here, our chances to hit, our, our damage output is a little bit more likely because his aim is much better than any other soldier class. We can zoom in. You can see his reticules are a lot smaller. So we could target things like his leg. Uh, we can target the grenade itself, which is cool. This is his, like, grenade launcher. If we are able to blow that up, then he doesn't really have any damage. And uh, we could also just target, like, if we target this heavy leg... We may still do damage to other things based on that bullet spread that we were talking about. 100% are definitely going to land in here. 50% are going to land in here. So it's an option. Uh, we are pretty far back, so that might be a decent way to start it. And then we have our heavy class. And this guy has got the missile that we could launch. It takes a second to load for some reason whenever you click that. But uh, the range is not insignificant. And... Uh, he launches a missile, as you might imagine. All right, so that's the basic overview. We also have this thing. This is the armadillo. And it looks like at some point we'd be able to uh, use certain abilities. So if I just click off of this, if you hover over it, you could ram in a straight line in a selected direction. Uh, you can shoot enemies with these things, and it's got armor piercing. But right now, if you click on it, the character is disabled, so we don't have any of that. Uh, it'll be cool to see when that unlocks, but... I hope that's like a clean, basic overview for you guys. 
And uh, we can fight this thing. We can shoot it if we want. But our main priority should be uh, this enemy that we see up here. So that's what we're going to focus on right now. This guy has a lot of armor, so we're going to position him in front. Uh, we likely just going to keep him there. Uh, I don't know... So if we come in here, this guy can likely launch one of those grenades at us. Which, you know, I don't love the idea of. Let's put him here for now. I think what I'm going to do is set these two guys up on overwatches. Be nice to actually utilize this high ground up here. It's pretty cool. Let's put him here for now. And we'll overwatch these two. What's our shot like? Yeah, maybe we just take this shot. It's going to be better than an overwatch. Uh, we're likely to do at least two damage. Hey, we got one of them. Okay. Likely isn't guaranteed. And if we wanted to, we could even move him. Because of the way that these uh, points work. With our sniper, I'm going to just sit back here. We're going to take this shot. Let me see if there's anything worth targeting. You know, maybe the grenade, but you can see... Because we don't have it all within that blue area, it's going to be a lot tougher. So I think we're better off just going for them. Maybe even targeting this section, getting some spray all over the place. Each individual... Um... Well, that's unfortunate. Each individual limb has specific uh, HP and armor. Okay, so we have a second one over here now. In case you're wondering, uh, Phoenix Point doesn't work the same as XCOM in terms of alien uh, or enemy discovery. They can just come and attack you on their turn, no problem. Like this guy might. He's pretty far away, so I think we're safe. Nope, we're not. He's on us! So that's pretty dangerous. But there's nothing you can do. You don't know where these guys are. So your positioning is, uh, is really important. But had we known that we had these two guys right next to us, well, that would be a little bit of a different story. So our sniper is now uh, under their control, which is absolutely terrible news. But uh, an interesting way to start, nonetheless. So we're going to start trying to focus this and uh, see if we can get him out of there. The problem is... I don't know if this damages our guy. I don't think so. I hope, I hope there's no, like, stray bullet stuff that can hit our dude, but we'll see. Oh, we do actually take a little bit of damage from that. That's interesting. Okay, so pretty scary. We gotta kill those little bugs. And we don't get a turn with him either. Okay, so this dude over here needs to die. Immediately. Now, I don't think he, he is behind cover, but I don't think he utilizes cover. I was pretty sure that we could see him there. Okay, good, good, good. We're gonna do a bunch of damage. Let's take this. We missed it. Because we're firing through the cover. He's not utilizing it as typical cover, but I guess we do fire the bullets into it. Fair enough. Now I have to be concerned. Now I have to be concerned that he runs up here. So we're just gonna overwatch this. Nothing we can do here, and our sniper doesn't get the turn. So he's deploying this mist, which, again, buffs the aliens inside of it, and debuffs us as we're in it. But I think, generally, unless you're fighting around there, they can be left well enough alone. This is a pretty unlucky start for us, having these two things right close to us. And then missing that shot as well. I might have benefited there from some manual aiming to get around the uh, around the cover. But now we got to deal with it, which means we're going to take some damage. We have med kits; we can heal it off. But that is so unfortunate. All right. Okay. Could be worse, guys. It could be worse. 
Now this guy. We want to start targeting this down pretty aggressively if we can. Uh, we might want to move. Let's see. I think I'm just going to move slightly. Get a little bit better cover. Hmm. Our chances are better over here. There we go. Nice shot. So he's got the bleeding as well. Now for Josh. If I move up here, we don't have visual on either of those. I would have a visual from this side. Indicated by the red line there. The white lines mean that there's something obstructing our shot. But we still have a visual. If we can get these two likely damage here, the bleed out will kill him. Or we can just kill him with... On our own. No problem. Alright. No action points left. Uh, I don't see any better spot to move you. This guy is likely going to launch a grenade here. Okay. So this guy, I believe he has an ability called uh, Return Fire. And he'll fire on any enemies within sight that do... Pretty much any shots like that. I'm just wondering if we can actually visually see that somewhere. I don't think so. I think it's just... Oh yeah, right here. So, shoot any visible enemy that attacks, but only if you're using a weapon that can return fire. So, this is where you see their passives. Uh, I'm not sure. So, Benjamin has it as well. Josh doesn't. Um, but our sniper does. Okay, so we have on three people, which is kind of nice. All right. So, I would like to be able to move out here. I can't, unfortunately. I could sit on this side, just hoping that we get a really good shot off. Actually, we have this light post that's providing a good amount of cover for us, too. So this can work for us. This is highly likely to kill, as well, indicated by that red skull. Now, there's a couple of abilities that these guys have that I haven't really talked about yet. Um, this guy has a Rage Burst, which kind of works as you can imagine. I think we can target uh, a couple of different things and basically unload our whole clip on those targets. Uh, this guy has a 3 Burst uh, shot for rapid clearance with no action cost, which is really helpful. Um, they also have individual inventories. Now, you'll notice that it costs 25% to go into your inventory. Swapping stuff in and out of your inventory costs points as well. Uh, so all things that we have to manage. We're getting a little bit low on ammo here. We do have one shot available. Uh, he's super far away, so I don't think there's a point in utilizing that. Um, we could just reload, but I think we'll save it. We also have limited number of clips. If this is your first um, Phoenix Point experience, that's going to be something that's pretty different. Rather unique is that uh, you can't just re keep reloading, keep reloading. You have to have clips enabled to reload your weapon. Uh, and that's inside of your inventory. So Let's overwatch here. We could... You know what we'll, we'll do here? Uh, these med kits, they heal for four. So let's just heal up. You'll also notice individual body parts that can get damaged. Uh, same thing as when targeting an enemy. If we get our arm shot off, so as an example, if our sniper got our, his arm injured uh, or disabled, he wouldn't be able to use his longer sniper rifle. He could only use one-handed weapons like his pistol, which is, uh, you know, obviously pretty scary. We'll sit here for now. I don't have anything else that we can do. Uh, do we need to overwatch? I don't know. Maybe if he gets close, it's good, but we'll see. We'll just throw it down anyway. I'm impressed that we hit that. That was pretty far.
So he's preparing. Ooh, there's another one way down there. The one thing in Phoenix Point that always catches me off guard is the range at which we we can see enemies. Um, it doesn't mean that we're going to be able to hit them, but detection is so much different than XCOM. I don't know what that thing is. What is that exactly? Oh, that's just another one. It was just positioned in a weird way. It's the same enemy type, but just positioned slightly off kilter. Alright, we do need to reload here. I wonder, where is our... Here's our heavy. Let's switch over to the missile. I want to see if we can hit both of these. Oh, it's really close. But they're just, they're just far enough away where it won't hit both. Unfortunately. Let's see, where could we go to have a visual? Oh, I have to switch the other weapon to see it. I can go from here. Let's see what we get. He does have some armor, so getting rid of that would be nice. We have a better chance of actually hitting that guy or high, higher damage potential. See, we have three there. I guess that's because, see how this has um, all of this debris blocking it? Whereas this guy, if we zoom in, well, he's got this too, but maybe it's just a little bit less. A lot of that stuff will come with time and experience. Okay, we broke the arm, destroyed the grenade, which is nice, so now his uh, damage output is significantly limited. I'm wondering if we should try and throw down a turret here. I don't really want to move up into this range because then he'll just launch a grenade at us. Uh, but I'd like to experiment with this turret at some point. I don't know if hiding behind this vehicle is actually that good for us. Uh, sniper... Needs to see something soon. Let's see if we can maybe finish this guy. It's not bad. He is bleeding, so if we can inflict more bleeding, then lovely. I think I'm actually going to aim for his leg here. Demolished. Alright, cool. I'll happily take that. Chances to hit from here aren't that bad. Let's just take it. Nope. You know what? I'm going to drop down the turret here. Just to uh, experiment with it. A lot of what I'm going to do in this, in this uh, series is actually just experiment with the different tools at our disposal and see what's possible. I'll back out into this cover now. I think this is fine. Uh, this icon, by the way, are the crates that we've identified that we can go and get. Um, if you just clear out all the enemies, you should get all the crates regardless. Look at the mist is growing significantly. Okay, so that's how it works. I have not seen this thing deploy mist multiple times. So that's cool. I like that. So you do have to... It does force you to deal with those towers. Otherwise, it's just going to overrun you. We'll try and take this guy out. Oh, hello. Yet another one. We'll see if we can target his grenade with the sniper. We're still a little far back, but the sniper is pretty accurate. There's our turret. <laughs> Handled! That turret seems really strong. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. Now this guy we can't see, like, at all. If we target in here, maybe? 
but we only have the one shot, so the chances of it landing within there is pretty small. I think what we'll do... Hmm. How can we get to this guy? Let's come up here into full with Mike. What's our shot like? Not great. So maybe we just use this as like bolstering our position this turn. Here's uh, another crate on this side. And what's over here? Another one of these. I think these guys are called the Mine Fraggers. That would make sense. I hate them all. <laughs> as you can tell why. From that early sequence. Man, I wonder... I don't have a good way of getting up there. With our, uh, with our heavy, we do have this jump thing. We should get us high ground, but... I don't know if it's necessary right now. Let's overwatch here. We'll do... Yeah, let's let's force them to come to us in this scenario. What I might start doing with the sniper, if I have decent shots here, which I don't... I was gonna say maybe we'll start firing on that thing, but... I think it might become a little bit of a problem. If there's no other enemies, I'm not too worried about it, because I don't think we take damage in this miss zone. It's just debuffs to, uh, to us, so... Where can I get our sniper? I'm gonna go here. Okay, you be cool. We actually do have a potential shot here. Pretty unlikely. Let's just overwatch. He's super far away. I don't think he can reach us. I'll take that. I don't know about uh, how quote-unquote percentages or likely unlikely damage work on overwatches because I imagine the fact that they are not in cover or chance to hit is okay uh, but they're also moving so those are some of the challenges that come with a system like this now the alien activity you'll notice performance wise it's not that great if you're scrolling around so I would advise probably just not doing that uh, performance as a whole is okay. I've had a couple of uh, crashes, but that's to be expected in, in these type of builds. Okay, so we gotta get we gotta get a better visual if we can here. There's that bench on that side. If we come from here, let's take a look. Yeah, much better. There's that grenade. I'm gonna go here so that we're gonna hit him. But we're not exactly sure where. If I target on this side, there is this range that we, that we might not. Maybe if I can go like right there. That is quite unfortunate. <laughs> that is quite unfortunate. Let's get a reload in. So he has no more clips. Handled. Alright, sniper. Need a little bit of work. Maybe in those situations, like, maybe it's not even value add for me to... Uh, to manually aim like that. Look at the amount of shots we can take if we don't move with this technician. That's actually really cool. We still have enough to reload, too. Alright, sniper would be cool. Uh, Mike, I'm going to move you in slightly. We have that little mind fragger thing coming in. Thank you. 
Look at this. This is going to just take over. That is not a small amount either. Like this is this could go huge areas if they're if they're left uh, undealt with. So that's cool. I like that. Because the way I was kind of looking at these previously was, well, you could just ignore it. Doesn't become a big deal. But if you're if you got a bunch of aliens in here, that's a problem. You're gonna have a serious issue. And then you have to focus these while the aliens shoot you. It's bad news bears. That he is close enough, man. Okay, so we're gonna have to learn all of that kind of stuff. Where, how far their range is, etc. Hmm, I wonder if we're better off, like, taking a shot like this with our sniper, who's a little bit more accurate. Man, it's pretty low. Whoa! Buckle down there, buddy. You all right? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, now I need to just find a visual of this thing. I can't do it from here, I don't think. Oh, here we can. Thought that we could. Weird. Okay. We'll shoot at it next turn. Reload the uh, sniper rifle. Okay. Let's, uh, hmm. I think what I'm going to need to do here, let's do a little inventory management. So let's say I want to drop this on the ground. Okay, this is going to cost me some stuff, but that's fine. Uh, this guy should be able to come over. Pick this up from the ground. And then use it. So it's a little bit of a weird way to transfer items. You might, I don't know if you can just transfer if they're ne next to each other, but. Got him. Now, it did say that we should be able to um, get all the stuff in the crates if you just kill the enemies. Yeah, so there we go. So we got sniper rifle ammo, hand grenades, machine gun magazines, turret items, uh, PDW ammo. And uh, what is also cool is if you don't need a whole bunch of stuff, you could go and grab what you wanted from the crates and then you could evacuate, um, which is totally valid. So that's our first scavenging site. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, I'll do a quick save here. I'm going to end the video at this point. Uh, if you guys have questions, as I said, uh, leave them down below. Um, we'll try to help you out as best as we can. If you're interested in checking out Phoenix Point, I'll have a link down below as well. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll do uh, a few of these missions and try to get some variety in there. Maybe we'll see those Haven missions. Uh, we'll likely try the scavenging site next because that's the next one that we have access to. Uh, but this will be a little bit more difficult because it's located inside of a mist zone. So we'll see how that plays out. But yeah. Wish me luck. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.